Hello everybody and this is a new tutorial and I am going to call this the postcard tutorial because I realized if you don't want to keep this art and there are a lot of you who have to stay at home or you're at home with your children and maybe you won't want to be doing the exact same project I'm doing but if you're making little art pieces this size um, four by six um, I'm using a three by five today, which I will cut to a four by six. You can use cardstock and you can get this on Amazon to make postcards. You don't have to purchase postcards. You can do that if you like. They're not expensive, but you can actually make them and just draw the back right on and, you know, put the postcard stamp there. And so you're actually making a handmade postcard, which, you know, might be really neat for an older relative or someone who's not used to, used to getting something handmade. Um, so something for your kids to do uh, to, for people maybe they haven't been seeing for a while. So, or if you like, and you just really like how, you know, what you did came out, you can frame them. Yeah, they're frameable size. So today we're going to be doing a small piece. Uh, it's a little landscape. I want to show you exactly how I did it. And I have a really cool new secret weapon, and I bet it's something you have around the house, a tool you can use. So let's get started on this little landscape. I did it a couple of times. Um, I did a larger one over here, which is, um, I'm not sure you could see, um, this piece. Uh, which is five by seven. And I thought, wow, I'd like to make that smaller so I could make it a postcard. Let's see what I can do. So I did, I made this to four by six. And again, the shapes are so simple. It's something you can do. And uh, let's show you exactly what you need. Again, very simple things. I've got my pencil, which is key with my eraser on the end, key tool here. Then I have my colored pencils of the colors that we're using in this. And these are blues and purples, no particular kind. I even have Crayolas here right from the um, dollar store. I have a couple of greens as well. Uh, they're just things I've collected over the years. A lot of them come in children's um, kits from Michaels. So I'm not using anything fancy here. Then the one thing I always use um, is a, a Posca marker and this is an acrylic white marker. I have this also in another kind of marker. But these are markers with acrylic paint on the inside of them. It's just acrylic paint like you would purchase. So these are blending tools and we'll be looking at um, how those blend. They're a real key to my technique. You'll find them on almost every video I do. Gives you kind of a neat impressionistic looking painting on these small works of art. So I like to go kind of quickly. Um, you can back up and look at these um, if you like, but I want you to see that this is not a really complex um, way to make art so you're comfortable with it. So I am first, as always, we look at shapes, darks and lights, then we'll look at color and there's the technique in here and then I call them um, the details which move your eye around the page. So let's start. Where do we see our major shapes? The major shapes are here in these pieces that look like foliage or trees. So I'm going to just draw them. And this is a slightly smaller format than this. And I've been practicing a little bit because I've got, a, like I said, a secret weapon. They don't have to be perfect. We're going to be layering, um, which helps you not be concerned at all about mistakes. I would like you to look at how this line is not straight. So let's not make that line straight. Let's make that 
little curvy. And what that is indicating, and this is if you're drawing from life, and, and you will be, and I will be walking you through that eventually. These are uh, shadows from the foliage on the ground. Another shape we see is this part called the foreground. So I'm going to put that shape in there as well. And let's look at the shape of this cloud, which goes up like that, and over here. And then there's a shape here of a cloud. And it comes down over here. And as I recall from my first one, and I'm going to look back, I know that this one came and did this. And the reason I stopped to show you this, I've mentioned this on other videos as well. Um, I can see now this is going to be a little high. But when we look at a composition on a piece of art, I like to put in art principles as I speak, there's always a path for your eye to come in to a work of art or painting. Here I'm seeing it up here in these clouds. And this S shape, your eye needs a pathway to walk, but it doesn't want to fall off the bottom. And so um, depending on how you come into the artwork, you want to make it stay inside. You don't want it to like be flying out on different sides. It's a, it's a way of composition that we learn in art. Come in and then stay in. We're walking around. It's kind of like how they trap you in Ikea or they trap you in Walmart where you have to keep walking around. A work of art is essentially the same thing. We want to keep you in the work of art and looking at it. It keeps it, in, it's, that's what makes it interesting. So now we'll do our darks and lights, and I'm going to do the darks. And I know this is down just a little bit lower. I'm not going to go way high here. Again, you see, I, I, I want you to feel comfortable not worrying about particulars. Now I'm going to go in here and make this cloud shape. And I know this cloud shape came here. I want to make sure I'm keeping that, that S visible for myself. And this was up here somewhere like this. So actually to me, when I put my darks and lights in, I should be kind of comfortable that my whole composition is there already. And if it's not, I might have a problem. So I want to make sure it's there. Eh, up, that's okay. And then I don't go right like that. So there, to me, I have a composition that's Ikea. I'm walking in and I'm going to have to walk around in here without flying out on the edges. And you, you'll understand this more. The more you look at art, you'll understand why your art, your eye stays in some art. Now we're going to go right into the color again. What I do with my method, I, I go right over my pencil because it's already got my darks. And I know these are my darkest darks right here in this foliage. And there's a whole lot of different tutorials besides landscapes. You could see this, this, thought process, this method, works in pretty much anything. Because um, these are art principles at work without getting real complicated. Okay, another thing I mentioned, there's always kind of a, a uniform color that goes throughout the piece that keeps it cohesive. So I know this green is going to end up in other places, just not yet. So let me go ahead now. I'm going to go ahead and, and go in and I'm going to do my blues. I'm going to go right over these because that's also blue. I'm going to go right down in here. Every time I do these over with you, I don't really know exactly how this is going to turn out because 
as an artist, you don't know. If you don't expect perfection, you're going to get art because art is art. It's not paint by number. It's, it's an adventure. So let your art be an adventure. Yours doesn't have to look like everybody else's. Imagine if we went to a museum and everything looked the same, we wouldn't stay very long. So you will find something. Here's another blue that might work for you and doesn't work for other people. And that's all well and good. So I'm just kind of your guide here. I am not the boss of how things will turn out for you. So keep an open mind to yourself and what feels right for you. Okay. Looking good to me so far. I'm going to Go down here, because I know down here is a little bit darker, so I just want it to be darker. One of my darkest darks is always purple. Let's see if I have my purple here. It's a little purple colored pencil. I'm going to go in here. This foliage on this is ultra dark, so we are making it dark. And as you see shadows in life, they're called cast shadows. If something like trees are casting a shadow, that is going to be one of the darkest darks, depending on where that tree is standing. So that's where you're looking at some real darks. And I'm going to put them down here in the foreground. When we do simple sketches, I explain all this in more detail about the theories and such, but I don't like to get too weirded out because I want us to have fun first and foremost, not pretend we're in some kind of a college class. Okay, let's take a look here. I stop frequently and try to reevaluate what I'm doing. Okay, I want to see a sharp edge along these trees. So I know they're there. So I'm going in and putting it in there. Okay, and I'm gonna put a little purple up here. Again, it's where I kind of am pulling that color through the whole thing. And with this method, I have a white marker that serves not only to blend, but to help me correct things if I don't like it. So, okay, and I would say if there's anything that helps me do my art, it's the marker. Um, I learn more about what I'm doing as I talk with you. So let's watch what this marker does. This is the Posca marker, and it's a medium chisel tip. I have a broad chisel tip I just bought, and I'm not crazy about it. And I don't like the fine ones. So let's watch this blend these colors. And a lot just came out and I, it's okay. Um, I'm gonna just blend this white. Like so a little blobby today. Not sure why. And I'm going to go right over that gray. And it's really blobby today. I don't know why. So I'm going to use, I'm never worried about using my finger either. So I'm just blobbing that out there. That marker's doing a little bit of weird stuff. I'm not going to worry about it. I think the marker's getting a little bit old. I kind of am rough on them. So let's hang with that a minute. And do this. Okay, since I made, which would look like a major mistake here, watch how quick this marker dries and what I can do to go back over it. Um, actually, I'm using my fingernail because uh, 
it's acrylic, I can just go right into it and it's part of how my paintings come out the way they do um, with this kind of a scratchy look. So um, that's dry. So I'm, I can go right back in with this colored pencil. And I usually use um, a reference. So if I do a total screw up like that kind of looked like, I've always got this over here to help me get back on track. So let's see, where am I? Like I said, I'm doing this with you for the first time. Oh, I'm going in, this is a Crayola colored pencil, folks. Nothing fabulous here. I'm gonna go back in and find those blues again. There they are, they're back. So I go back up here, find that blue again. I am hard on tools, that's okay. So let's stop again. My darkest darks, I need to make sure they're there. Let's go back to my green and put those back and I broke it. So I'm gonna sharpen it. And I'm gonna halt for just a minute so my phone doesn't overheat. Right back. And back again. So I'm gonna use this purple. I took a little time to sharpen some things. Now let's fill this part in so I have some sense of what's happening in this area. That is a lighter green. I'm gonna go in there and just fill that in. Is that lighter green? I know part of that. When I see a lot of greens, uh, they're probably in a lot of different areas. So let's go ahead and put them up there and down here. You see, it's a lot of layering and not being, using a reference and just working at it from the concept of darks, lights, and a few simple colors lets me go to where I'm trying to, um, to the place I'm trying to achieve without getting myself awash in a lot of art principles, which I do know, but I don't want to overwhelm you with. So I'm gonna use my pencil again, cause it's gray and it's gonna give me these kind of scratchy gray clouds. Um, so I'm gonna sharpen it up a little bit and I'm gonna come back in here and do that. Now this motion that I'm using here, as you can see, I use that a lot. And this gives a uniform look to the piece, which you wouldn't get if you were like doing this thing. So, so you'll see me kind of, I'm always kind of going like this. Your hand may want to do something a little different. So watch what your hand likes to do. Maybe it wants to do this way. Um, give it a try. So now I feel like I'm, I'm getting back. I'm looking more like this over here. I see that this area is darker. So I want to make sure that that is defined as a dark. Again, and I say this over and over and over again. Darks and lights, darks and lights. If you can get your mind to think more about darks and lights than about, wow, these are trees, you're halfway there in, um, to making more realistic art. You go, oh my God, that doesn't look like a tree. You're thinking about shapes. Now I've got a, t a little tan pencil. I see it here, this tan color. I'm gonna go right in like that and do this. magical finger tool. Now, 
these edges, where is my pencil at this top? These are important. These are detail edges. And I'm going to show you, this is where the new secret weapon comes in that I ac accidentally found yesterday. You'll find your own. So let's get this cloud in here, and we're getting close to done. And since my Posca marker is leaking, I'm just going to use another white mark paint marker. It's the same thing. It's just a different brand. So this is called Art Artisto. It's just a, a white paint marker. So let's get that cloud in because that Posca marker just seems to be doing leaky things which you don't need. And I'm, see, I use that as a, see how that blends things for me? It's a blending tool. Um, let's see, I want to blend that, I'll blend that a little bit. I actually make decisions on the fly here. Okay, this will just blend this a little bit. All right, not bad. Not bad for a few minutes, huh? Now I'm going to stop. Here's my secret weapon. I accidentally get, we're doing stay at home art because here we are in the uh, times maybe when we can't rent out to Michael's or go anywhere, maybe on, even on Amazon, you can't get it for a week or two weeks or whatever. This is Bic uh, Correction Fluid. It's white out. I found this does some really cool stuff. Watch this. Um, it's white, right? So check this out. Um, I'm not even sure what's in this stuff, but over here, watch the edges of these trees. It does this like really kind of sketchy, weird thing. I keep watching. So then I can just scratch and move into that to leave an edge. I just accidentally did this yesterday, but it's giving me an edge on those trees that I've never gotten any other way. Kind of interesting to me. And I wanted to come down a little bit. Again, it's kind of like using paint without having paint, but, but it actually gives you this sketchy appearance, which is cool. So let's say I wanted some of that really kind of interesting, sketchy appearance up here in these clouds. So I'm going to try it up here. Okay, watch this. I'm going to just scratch into this. And it does this kind of a cool, it sits on top of everything, which is whatever is in this stuff. So I'm, again, I'm trying to show you, it's not about um, how expensive your stuff is. It's like, what are you willing to try to get there? Um, so we're pretty close to the end and I, oops, that's the broken one. I really want some more dark down here. And I want it to be purple and I'm not getting it because I broke that. Um, there's another one. Let's see if here, it's a little more dark. If you, you gotta, if you're like me though, you're just gonna, you batter things a little bit and um, I still don't have the edging on these trees that indicate to me that they are trees. So um, that's what I'm doing here. Um, and as I recall, I think I want a little bit of, a little bit of this yellow on the edge. To show me that there's a little light behind it, maybe. And this shows me, oh, there's some other things going on in those trees. Um, now, just so I don't keep you here all day, I'm just going to do just a few more details. Because these details, when you do it, are going to be up to you. Um, kind of showed you quickly how we've made a postcard size piece. 
of art that looks like a little landscape. And it's not like I do this all, you could see me make huge mistakes. I don't do this all the time. I've never actually been a landscape painter per se. Um, and I see this here. Let's see. Which I want to be able to see that S curve. Okay, and I'm gonna call that done um, for the day. Uh, postcard, and I'm gonna be introducing some more um, postcard ideas for you. But here you see, I've got three in a row, very similar. This one over here, I use more markers. I'm trying to limit it to, to one white marker here. As we go forward, I'll start bringing in other markers so you can see, you know, we can broaden this. But here we're, we're doing colored pencils in our fabulous whiteout. And um, we get something I think that's pretty acceptable. You can seal this with Mod Podge. You can get that at any at the dollar store, which should still be open in your locale. Or there's um, acrylic sealers you can use from um, from art stores. So thank you for being with me today. And that's our postcard size art. You can cut this to four by six and uh, send it to someone you like. And this is Marcy Fine Art signing off for today. Have a wonderful day and be creative during this time. Thanks. Bye-bye. I wanted to show you the final cut version of the postcard. So this is about four by six. And I did the image just slightly smaller than four by six. The maximum size for the postal service is 4.25 by a little bit over six inches. So um, let's see what that is. It is 4.25 by six. So that's the largest you can go. So um, this is close to that. And so I just trimmed it to that size and wanted you to see the final piece. And on the back then, I just made my own postcard. So you just draw the line with a, a black marker right down the center there, make some lines, put your address on, write a, a little note, put some postage on, and you have your own handmade postcard to send off. So again, thanks for joining me on Marcy Fine Art, and we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Have a great day.